Hey, what's up, guys? We're here at ZS 2016 with Michael, the CTO and co-founder of Energist. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And um, he's just going to talk us through with the company and the really cool wireless charging standard. So let's get into it. What on what sets you guys apart from other wireless charging? Sure, people? sure. So, um, so when I started this company, the goal was um, started with trying to charge my kids' batteries. I was constantly tired of pulling them out of the toy. Now you have to you know, screw, unscrew it, take it out, charge it. Um, and I thought there's got to be a better way than having to do that every day. And as soon as I started looking at the problem, I realized it wasn't just me. It's not just toys, not just batteries. It's cell phones, it's wearables. There's just a whole host of different um, devices today that have batteries. You know, so many smart devices that you, know, you need to charge. And there's just got to be a better way of doing that. Um, so at Energist, our goal is to really be able to charge at a distance. So you don't have to go find a specific place to put your device. Um, you walk into a room, you put your phone down, you leave it in your pocket. We find that device wherever it is and, and charge it uh, remotely. It's perfect. So we could, it's obviously great because as, a, as I said to you, we know that the pain points of wireless charging is it's not really wireless when you have to then have a corded pad and you have to have specific positioning. So what kind of sets energy are different in terms of the over-the-air stuff, just kind of talk us through the over-the-air stuff you showed off at CES 2016 and how, where kind of that, the springboard from that and what 2015 was for you guys. Sure, sure. So last year I think we, we really show what's possible. Um, we showed our transmitters embedded in, in a TV bezel, we showed it in a speaker, kind of showing where you can put it in your home and where you would see it in the future. Um, this year has been all about commercialization and miniaturization. We spent a lot of effort um, on making this a you know, product that can go in your hands as soon as possible. So everything from um, you know, effectively making a smaller chips, more cost-effective chips. Um, it's been a big year for this on miniaturization. I think you saw two days ago that we released our, our mini transmitter. Um, and what we found as we did miniaturization this year, there's a whole ecosystem that's not being fulfilled, and that's the wearable market. Um, you know, until today, trying to put a coil in a Fitbit or a Misfit or something that's really small, that has a very small battery in it, it's just not feasible. And being able to completely seal that device so it's waterproof, you can take it swimming, you can work out with it, um, we found that's just an untapped market. And by being able to take our smaller version of our transmitter and put it in the box, the wearable, we kind of solve the, the chicken and egg you may find in the ecosystem when you traditionally launch a new technology. Yeah. We kind of need to... Technology needs to innovate, but then you need someone to do something to make it innovative. And it's just, I see on instead of what the chicken. Yeah, and I, again, you know, we're not a product company. You know, our goal is to enable all these different verticals. Um, so there's there's a natural synergy of well, what comes first, right? And for us, um, you know, while we may be in mobile devices in a year from now, um, or or any other time frame based on our, our different strategies we're working with. There's certain market segments that can be very fast to market, and we want to make sure that, that people with their pain points can be solved right away. And just on the topic of your kind of, because you obviously, Energist is a licensing company, as, as sure. opposed to, like you said, you're not a um, hardware manufacturer. Are there any companies you're working with that you can tell us now, for specifically within the mobile arena? I wish, I wish. Um, you we know, have to ask the question. <laughs> we did announce last year, right after CES, I mean, CES was great for us. We announced our first top tier uh, consumer electronics company is one of the top five in the world. Um, unfortunately, we can't announce who they are, as, as, as it would be with most uh, large companies who want to keep it secret until they launch. Um, we were working feverishly last year. Um, we have said that we hope that they'll launch in you know end of 2016, early 2017. It's really in their control. Um, but certainly, there's a lot of market segments are starting to address now that we think can, can come into market even sooner than, than that time frame. Um, Again, it's been, a, it's been a good year for us, not just in terms of miniaturization, um, but in terms of uh, you know, patents. We got six patents awarded. I think it's important um, that as you come up with new technology that is defensible and that um, and it can have a, you know, uh, a broad appeal. Um, we've, uh, we're on a third version of silicon. So the silicon we have this year that you would embed in, you know, in your watch, your phone, or a wearable, or you know, a battery, or a camera, any of those things, it's production silicon. It's ready to go. You know, you don't have to wait another year for us to 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 flush it out. Um, you know, this is the version that uh, we think is good good enough to go. Um, that's one of the reasons we announced that we're doing evaluation kits um, this month for both the miniature transmitter as well as um, a longer distance transmitter and more of an enterprise transmitter that we showed last year. Just want to kind of bring it back a sec because you've actually come to one of the questions I was going to talk about, which is sure. the patents. Um, obviously, we had you had the patents approved last year, but you've had. I know that we fought a lot of patents. You right. filed so, a lot that weren't issued. So, so we filed over over 150 patents in the last uh, three and a half years. 
I mean, this company was started three and a half years ago or three years ago. Um, there's only a couple of us. But we realized that there's so many market opportunities that we wanted to make sure we had ample protection. Um, so we filed patents in everything from our antennas to the architecture of our chips to the different market segments. Um, you know the patent office in the U.S. is a little slow, so it's taken uh, three years to get our first six patents issued. But we have six issued, issued in the last couple months. Um, and every month we'll have more that are being reviewed and issued. Um, but, you know, that's very important, obviously, as we grow our company. If we want to be li like an arm or others who license our technology into these different segments, we need to make sure that our partners are comfortable with our technology. And you obviously protected your own interests. You, talking of the USPTO, these patents are just in the U.S.? Or do you, are you still no, looking they're, to expand they're, No, they're worldwide? both. They're both. I mean, if you count the, the U.S. international patents, they're probably over 200 that we filed. Um, so we're protecting it worldwide. I mean, again, our view, um, especially with our, our different strategics and our tier one, this is a, you know, it's the global market and global solution that they, they want to address. Um, so we're definitely seeking protection everywhere. That's awesome. And just on the topic of patents, there was a, at least not so much last year, but kind of the year before, there were allegations of that some of the patents are, well, another company has, a smaller company has very mm. similar patents, but okay. obviously with patents being issued, are there other people working who have almost very similar technology or is Energist doing something that is kind of very unique to the company? Well, I think, you know, we're, we do RF. You know, wireless has been around for 20 years. There's thousands and thousands of patents on telecom for RF. I've been in the telecom market for 15 years, so um, it's very hard to, to, in general, file, you know, new and novel patents. In this area, there's just so much innovation that we've we've done in the last three years that there's just a lot of stuff that we can patent um, that makes us and differentiates us. Um, you know, we have our core patents. You know, we do things very different than others. I mean, there's one or two other companies looking at doing it with RF. There's some with RF, some with ultrasound, some with lasers. Um, we have some great strengths with the RF that we chose. Um, it can be very, very small. We'll show you some pictures um, or you can take some video of how small it can get. Um, I think the wearable market, um, it's very hard to address with coils, very hard to address with other technology. Um, with our RF solution, it can be very, very small. Um, so that's a huge advantage. Um, but I think, you know, the, the way we differentiate ourselves is, in, is in, in cost. I mean, in the end, it's a consumer device. It's got to be very cost effective. And having been in this market and, and our team has, has done a lot of different wireless products for Wi-Fi, WiMAX, LTE. We know how to make very cheap silicon. We know how to make very cost effective antennas. You really need to solve the entire ecosystem to make this cost effective. Um, as you do in a lot of new markets, you can't just say, here's a chip for the receiver. You have to make a cost effective transmitter. We need to be able to manage this system. And we'll show you later today, uh, we have a management system that sits in the cloud, lets us monitor all these devices so that when you walk into a hotel, you can get greeted and say, oh, here's your free, you know, free service. You know, here, we're charging your device. You're in a Starbucks and it can give you information and statistics and, and useful uh, data for those you know different providers. Kind of, it becomes a win-win for the company because they get information from what you're doing and things like that. But also for consumers because it's a reason to go in. We, we, I mean, if you go around the CES show floor, you see almost everywhere is just offering you free charging because you're right. We've got to the point where we use batteries everywhere. But the one thing that hasn't been solved is always staying kind of charged up. And even if you use a portable power bank, you then have to charge the power bank, and then you've got to charge it. And, it's kind of just a vicious cycle of having lots of information, having lots of great technology, but then not actually being able to use it when it runs out of battery. That's right. So could you just want to talk a bit about the over the air stuff we saw last year? Because it, it was really cool being able to kind of have within your home. And as I said to you earlier, it was one of the biggest pain points for me personally with wireless charging is having to use a pad that you have to have a certain position, but then you've got to plug into the pad and then it take it's slow charging as well. Could we see the concept of at least from a consumer aspect, of literally being able to not just have it built into homes, but do it as a, like an after-build modification of the home. So you walk into the room, you're ready to... A absolutely. So we have one or two vision models we'll show again today, like we showed last year, where you know you have a little sound bar that's below your speaker, I mean, sorry, it's below your monitor of your TV, uh, below the monitor of your computer, that would serve a smaller area. So I think the scalability part is really important, and we focus a lot on this year is you know, you could have a slightly bigger transmitter that may be two feet long by four inches wide that, you know, serves a small area in your office. You can have a bigger transmitter for enterprises that goes 15, 20 feet and serves a variety of people. Or you can have a miniature transmitter that can serve a very small area near your laptop so that you don't have to worry about plugging it in at all. It can be completely portable. I think that's, that's something that, um, you know, a lot of people 
uh, have kind of, you know, really uh, see the, the usefulness. You know, you, your laptop's everywhere with you, but you don't necessarily have a, a cord. And so if you're on your laptop, being able to charge a wireless device, even just from your laptop, is something that, again, offers a pain point that people have. Again, I completely agree. It's, so the problem with cables, it's wireless charging, but it's only ever wireless between, it's kind of wireless conductive, but as we said earlier, you have a pad, you can't use it. You have a laptop, you can put it on top and charge it and stuff like that. Let's talk about the miniaturization, because that's really where you guys sure. are going in 2016. You said wearables, but just moving outside of just the core of mobile tech, where else could we see the miniaturization being used? Sure, I think, you know, wearables, Internet of Things, um, you know, cameras, batteries, um, you know, anything that requires, uh, you know, tenth of a watt, uh, you know, half a watt, anything that's lower in power that doesn't need the distance but, but needs a constantly top up every night, um, I think is where we think there's a nice sweet spot. I mean, gaming controllers, perfect pet peeve, right? Your kids forget to put it down, they get upset Double when it doesn't work. AA galore. It's, right. it's almost like you can have the plug in charge and it does, but then eventually you're like, I don't really want to go back to a wired cable, especially if you've got a quite a large room and you're like, this doesn't fit over here. So, so I think that's a great use case um, that doesn't require 15 feet. We can have a very small effective transmitter on top of you know whatever gaming controller you have that charges your you know your your controllers within a five, six, seven foot area. So I think the the ability to adapt these different markets again, our view is that we want to enable these different market segments and having something that's flexible as small as a mini transmitter go as big as something that you know transmits at a distance. Um, I think that flexibility will enable markets that we didn't see, you know, a year ago when we were demonstrating it, we were showing the kind of the big vision where we w we'd end up in the future, you know, a year from now. I think we want to fill in that gap of things that people can launch, you know, this year. And I think that's what we're trying to do. And just talking about, obviously, energy, it's kind of away from just the mini transit, but, but what up and the whole product as a kind of, as a whole, there are certain wireless charging standards at the moment, which we know. Mm -hmm. Would it fit under one of them, or would it have to? Is it an entirely new? Would it become a new standard of its own? So, um, so the PMA, which is now called Airfuel, um, that consortium, we're actually leading the uncoupled working group. So, if you look at the, there's three different working groups there. There's the couple, which is the older matte technology, which has got to be you know directly on top. There's a loosely coupled, which is the you know the resonant, which you can be you know an inch or so away. Um, you know, meant to do higher power like cars and laptops. Um, and then there's the uncoupled. So we're actually chairing the uncoupled working group. Um, and that's anything, you know, at, at distance. So whether that's two, three, five feet, 10 feet, 15 feet. I mean, it is a working group, but there is no standard for this. But having the working groups, making sure that we all interoperate from the network layer so that you walk into, you know, a hotel, you may put it on a mat because you want to charge a laptop at 40 watts. We're not, you know, we're not going to address that market. It's very complimentary. It may have our technology in it so that when you go 10, 15 feet, we can top it up. So, you know, our view is, certainly my view is that it's not one, one solution takes all. You know, every solution has its uniqueness which applies to certain markets. We're never going to, you know, charge a Tesla. It's just not cost effective for the technology we're deploying. Our technology is really, um, geared towards anything that's 10 watts or less. Um, and what we're finding today is, you know, even your, your tablets that you could charge at 10 watts, if you're constantly topping it up during the day, you know, you don't need to deliver 10 watts. You can deliver 5 watts. You can deliver 2 watts. It's that, that utility that we're providing that, you know, is really solving the problem. Awesome. And then what does the rest of 2016 and 2017 and beyond hold for Energis? Sure. I mean, this, this year for us is the year of fulfillment. I mean, last year was um, showing what's capable, what the technology is capable of. Um, but now that we have our final silicon this year, all, it's all about getting our evaluation kits, getting chips in our partners' hands, and letting them drive to market with the different products that they have envisioned. Um, so it's all about fulfillment, commercialization, um, you know, productization of taking our chips and our reference designs and putting it into their products. Obviously, the biggest question is, we hear a lot about technology and a lot of it just doesn't, it's all concepts, concepts, concepts that people get excited about. And a lot of times concepts fall by the wayside. How real is what up? You know, I think uh, it's a natural question to ask. I mean, I'm always curious about new technology, how far away is it? And I think, you know, last year we show what's possible and we did show charging and we did show mobility, um, but we still had work to do in terms of commercial, you know, commercialization. Um, I think one of the things this year that we want to just make you know, infinitely clear to people is this is real and this is ready. And so what we did is we actually submitted our technology to Underwriter Labs, uh, UL Labs, one of the largest 
um, labs in the world that does FCC testing as well as other testing on equipment. They're the ones who test how long it takes to charge different phones and put out reports. And we said, you know, here's our technology. Here's what we showed last year. Here's our new receiver chips. You know, you do your independent testing. You tell us what we're receiving. And, and the report's public information. We announced it a couple months ago. Um, and it, it demonstrated what we've been talking about for last year. You know, we can charge up to five, six watts within five feet. You know, two, two and a half watts at 10 feet and one, one and a half you know, watch after 15 feet. And um, so, you know, technology's real. Um, we're actually getting, you know, the, 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 the amount of power we expect with our technology. Obviously, it's infinitely scalable to higher power and lower power like we're showing, showing today. Um, but I think it's important because a lot of technologies come out there. I mean, we're a public company. So when we say something, you know, we, we have to mean it. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of showmanship and there's always a showmanship in companies. Um, but for us, you know, we want to let people know this is real, um, and that's one of the reasons we submitted it to show that this is ready for prime time now. Fantastic, brilliant. And just probably one last question I do have, kind of to bring it back just to the kind of the patterns and stuff like that. Sure. With obviously coming in, trying to do something new, do you have any kind of concerns with the FCC approval processes or any any issues with that, or is just things it's quite simple to get around? I mean, no, I mean, FCC has is, is always been one of those barriers that we have to make sure, you know, it's safe. And, and certainly having kids, that was the first thing I want to make sure. <laughs> I'm not going to put anything out there that's not safe and since it's going to be in front of my kids. Um, and it's a process. Um, we, we talked about a year ago, again, um, you know, CES kind of uh, took us to the next level last year because we, we got a lot of, uh, you know, customer traction, in particular our, our Tier 1. Um, our Tier 1's actually um, has taken the lead on our FCC approval. Um, their view is that, you know, they've done hundreds of products and FCC approval. They know exactly what it takes to, to do that. Um, so we've um, we let them take the lead on that. Um, we think there's a very, very clear path to getting approved. Um, certainly it takes time. I mean, it's a new technology, so um, there's no standards for this. Um, but there is a clear path, and, and we hope that end of 2016, early 2017, you'll certainly see it in the hands with our Tier 1. Um, in the meantime, you know, our goal is to enable these other market segments and have them uh, launch this year, obviously with FCC approval as well. Fun. This is the year. This is the year. This is the year. Just... It's going to be the year. And that is the look of a relieved man who's like, this is finally the year has arrived. It it's takes been... time. It takes time for technology. So it's, Especially um, when you're trying something new, you, you get to the stage where you, it's almost like it becomes, it starts off as a concept, a dream, and then you just, it's just fulfilling it. So when you... You're probably going to be the most relieved man ever when, when it's like when the tier one does come up and you're like yes it's i mean i think it's good validation when you see you know our different customers i mean we're solving their pain points um but certainly we all want i mean i want the product out there i'd love to to be able to use our tier one's product right now but you know i can't and so um well we'd love to see it but we can't <laughs> as well we have to ask. so um no i mean i i think it's every entrepreneur's dream to see you know, their creation get deployed and solve a, a pain point. And I know it'll happen. It's just a matter of is it three months from now, six months from now, eight months from now. I mean, it's going to happen this year. And, um, and when it does, I think all of us will be, really, you know, very happy. So as a consumer, I mean, my kids ask me daily, when's my hex bug going to have it in there? I'm like, you know, be patient, be patient. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. And that's, it. that's that, guys. Energis is pretty much going to bring wireless charging to everywhere in your home. I think that's fair enough to put. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, thank, thank you very much to Michael for taking the time to give us the interview. We're going to take a look and we're going to, you'll obviously see some of the cool, like the miniaturization. We'll show you just how small wireless charging is because if you've had a wireless charging phone, you'll realize that the coil can be absolutely massive in the back of that thing. So kind of not really suitable if you've got something like a Fitbit, like you said. So we'll show you that now. And um, yeah, thank you very much, Michael, for absolutely. taking the time thank to you. have an interview with us.